uh, so yeah, we're gonna work um, front of the hip stuff today. Lots of times that area feels tight and um, we think, oh, I need to stretch it. Um, and, then it and then it just feels tight still again. So we're gonna do some stuff to engage it a little bit differently um, and then see how that feels. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we'll get started. I'll admit people if anyone else comes in as we're here. Hey, Carrie. Okay, so just come to standing, maybe take a couple of steps or just kind of walk around your space. And I want us to use the walking around your space as kind of a check-in. So just notice how the legs swing, how the arms swing, just how this act of walking feels in your body right now. And again, we're practicing that skill of being an observer. So notice if the mind wants to latch on to something and tell you how to correct it or fix it or anything like that and just reassure your mind. Yep, yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> I'm just gonna come back to noticing that. Okay, and then in standing, we're gonna um, just work with our shoulder blades just in standing and we're just gonna lift them up on the rib cage and then lower them down. We're gonna lift them up and lower them down. And this next time as you lift them up, maybe kind of shrug them forward a little bit and just feel how that path of the shoulder blade on the rib cage feels different than when your shoulders are straight out and up, okay? So kind of feel how the different vectors of where the head of your humerus is and whether it's in some in, in, internal or external rotation Uh, okay, well, I'm glad you guys found your way here. Carrie, just let me know if my email link was wrong. I should know better than to like try to do it when I've got a nine-year-old pulling on me. Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> I'm like, just let me finish this email. <laughs> okay. And then um, we're going to bring the arms out in front. You can hold the block if you want, but you don't have to. And we're just gonna reach the fingertips forward and broaden those shoulder blades as much as we can. Hi, Care. And then slide the shoulder blades back towards one another. So we're gonna reach and we're gonna slide. And we're gonna reach and we're gonna slide. And bring some kind of curves to your movement. So it's not linear, we're not kind of like robots and reaching straight forward and straight back let there be a bit of a almost like you're hugging a barrel and moving it away from the body and then hugging it into the body so there's a bit of a bend in the elbow and so we're just moving the shoulder blades on the rib cage there notice if you keep kind of reaching or retracting if there's a point where the spine also starts to go and see if you can just keep it shoulder blades for a second and then relax the arms take another little walk around your space and just notice how that feels and whatever sort of is new or different and then come to to stillness and then we're just gonna kind of swing i always think of um, when you watch any nature shows and sort of seaweed or algae under the water. And so we're not upright, we're letting ourselves be a little flexed through the spine and we're just letting the arms swing and move, almost like those, those ripples of algae underneath the water. And then you're just gonna come to stillness. Nice. Okay, so a, a little bit of movement for the upper body. Now we're gonna do um, some stuff with the lower body. I'm gonna use a block. Um, actually, I'm gonna use a block. So 
we're gonna work on our hip hinge first. So we're gonna take our block and it's gonna come just above the pubic mound, okay? And I've got it lengthwise. And then my hands are gonna come onto the end of it. Now, when I, when I push the block into my pubic mound, if I just relax, it's gonna send me into a hip hinge. I'm gonna to start to move right at that hip joint. And I, I think sometimes we think our hip joints are out here, but as you push into that block, feel how your hip joint is like, and there's one on one side of the block and one on the other side of the block, and it's about an inch away from where that block is. So the block can kind of start to give us a bit of feedback into the fact, and if you don't have a block, you can just also take your fingers and just bring them right on either side of that pubic bound. And again, when you push, you'll be pushing right on your femur bone head and it'll hinge you at the hip. I really feel how like that is your hip socket. Okay, once you're in that, just kind of bounce a little bit. Feel, shift the weight back to your heels. Shift the weight to your forefoot. Just getting some input into that hip crease, okay? Now, we're gonna start to bring some awareness to actually activating the front of the hip stuff to bring us into that position. So holding the block, what I want you to focus on is this idea of as I press into the block, I'm gonna think about reaching out from my hip crease to my knee, engaging the front of this leg stuff. And I'm gonna come up to standing. So I'm gonna push into the block, think about reaching from my hip crease out to my knee, engaging the front of this thigh stuff. And come up to standing. And I'm gonna simultaneously think of, as I push into the block from the hip crease, I'm also gonna reach up to my shoulder. Okay, so it's like, we're coming into this greater than sign. Well, I guess it depends, or less than sign. <laughs> As we hinge at that hip, think about coming in by reaching from the hip crease up to the shoulder and out to the knee. Engage the front of the leg stuff. Okay, one more time. So that action kind of, in a sense, pulls us back into this position. Yeah, and, and feeling the front of the leg stuff. And the psoas actually attaches to the spine, so our leg kind of starts up by our navel, if you will, myofascially, and then come up to standing, just press the ground away. One more time, think of reaching, almost like you're gonna try to do a jump and pull your thigh up to your chest, keeping both those vectors long, okay? and then up to standing. Okay, so we're gonna use that awareness of our hip crease and hinge, come down onto that block. If you don't have a block, this could be the arm of a couch, okay? This could be a fireplace mantle. Uh, this could be the wall or a chair seat, okay? Wall might be tricky, um, actually, as I was doing it there, because we wanna have our um, second kind of point of contact underneath us rather than in front of us. I'm gonna shift my weight over into that right leg, okay? And then that left leg, I'm just gonna keep the leg long but lift the hip away from the ground while I press into the right leg and then lower it. I'm gonna press and lift it and lower it. So you can see how we're just lifting one half of the pelvis and lowering it. Now the next time I lift it up, I'm gonna set it down forward. So I'm gonna engage the front of that thigh stuff to step forward a little bit. And then I'm gonna lift that leg and step it back. Lift that leg, engage the front of the thigh stuff, step it forward, press into the ground, step it back. Engage the front of the thigh stuff. Think of from the crease out to the knee and from the crease to the shoulder 
and then set it underneath that hip. Lower the hips, spine is long, press the ground away, come up to standing. Just walk a little bit, having done that one side. And just notice how that feels. So you might feel like one leg kind of swings differently than the other. You might feel a difference in terms of how the front of the hip feels or across the back of the pelvis. And then we're gonna come back, again, engage the front of the hip stuff to bring ourselves down, keep hinging, find that support. And this time we're gonna shift the weight over into that left leg, lift up the right one, press firmly into the left, lower and just hover the right. We'll do that about two more times, and then we'll move it forward and back. Eek. This time we're gonna lift it, engage the front of the thigh stuff, set it down in front. It doesn't have to go even a full foot in front. It's gonna depend on a few different things, including the lengths of your limbs, <laughs> as to kind of where you can get that to as you go step forward and back. But feeling that left butt stuff and the back of the leg stuff on that standing leg. Okay, and then we're gonna put that right foot back, pull the hips down, press ourselves up. Again, just kind of walk and notice how that feels. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna come and you could um, just stand in the middle of your room, but if as we balance on one leg, you find that uh, you're doing more work, try not to fall over, come to the wall and just know that, okay, the wall's behind you, so you're not gonna go anywhere. So we're gonna work the front of the hip stuff in this position. So I'm gonna stand on my right leg, and I'm gonna think about from behind my knee down to my heel, reaching into the ground and simultaneously from behind my knee kind of up to my butt pulling the other way so it kind of tucks that side of my pelvis on that standing leg okay so as i'm reaching into that ground on that standing leg i'm going to start to lift that other leg from the hip crease i'm thinking about being long out through the knee and from the hip crease up to the shoulder doesn't matter how high this comes. I'm just gonna stay where I am. I could add the hand to kind of remind me to reach out through that knee and also to press up into. So I'm isometrically kind of engaging the front of the hip stuff without now changing the joint angle. And again, it could be down here, right? It could be down even lower. We wanna be able to engage those muscles at all the lengths through the arc. Okay, press, 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 press. Keep breathing easy. Whenever you need to take a break, you're gonna bring it down. Stand on both legs. We're gonna shift now onto that left leg. Think about reaching through from behind the knee down to the heel and behind the knee up to the pelvis. And then from the hip crease, out to that knee, hip crease up to the shoulder. So you'll feel your low abs kind of engage, possibly with that reach up to the shoulder out of the hip crease. Just find that isometric here. So we're not changing the joint angle, keep reaching through the standing leg. Spine is long. Three, two, one, Lower that down. Now, if standing, that standing leg's doing like a crazy amount of work, we're gonna do that again on each side two more times. But I wanna show you an option is, or if you find that you can't be upright because the, the leg 
attaches to the spine. So if this psoas is really tight, then when I go to lift this leg, I might flex forward. And when you're at the wall, you might realize that's what's happening. So you could do it. This is the same thing with a different orientation to gravity. So you guys that are going to be at the wall, you're at the wall. You're going to stand in that standing leg. Now I'm going to reach from the hip crease up to the knee and the hip crease up to my shoulder. And I'm going to bring that leg up. And I'm going to work here. Now I don't have gravity that I'm also resisting. So this is lower load, but I can add load with that hand. Okay, I want to press into the wall just like if I was standing and then from hip crease out to the knee and hip crease up to the shoulder, isometrically loading the front of the hip stuff. Four, three, two, and one. Relax it down. Come to your other leg. Stand in that other leg from the hip crease out to the knee, up to the shoulder. Find that degree of that greater than sign on this side. A little closer to the wall. There we go. Find that isometric work. Always thinking about hip crease out long to the knee. If you want to add more load wherever you are, you could straighten that leg. That's going to power up the front of the thigh stuff. Eee! <laughs> okay? So lots of options. Four, three, two, one, and relax. We're gonna do one more set each leg, and then we're gonna move on. So whether you wanna be on the floor or standing at the wall for this last one, find that standing leg, firm it up. Then from that opposite hip crease, out to the knee, reach, reach, reach. From the hip crease, up to the shoulder, nice and long. Find the angle of hip flexion you want, and then resist one another. Know that if you want to increase the magnitude of that load, lengthen that lever. Whether you're laying down or standing up, you're going to engage more of the front of the thigh stuff. Four, three, shaky, shaky, two, and one. Last one, switching sides. Firm up that standing leg. Reach from the opposite hip crease out to that knee, hip crease long up to the shoulder. Find that isometric, firm up that standing leg. You'll feel your low abs tone here. If you want, you can lengthen that lever. Keep reaching from the hip crease out to the knee. Four, three, two, and one. Good, release it. Walk around a little bit. Notice how that feels, having done some of those. So anyone with a camera on, just raise your hand. Do the front of your hips feel looser or longer, having done those? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we often think, oh, it feels tight, I have to stretch it. Yeah, great tip, Tiffany. But we don't have to stretch it. We need to engage it. There's a difference between tissue being um, long and taut versus it being short and tight. And quite often the front of the hip stuff is long and taut. And we need to get it working through that whole range. So if you wanted to work with that, you know, you could do five rounds. We're just going to do the three today and building up to being able to hold it for 45 seconds. And then you take a two minute break <laughs> before you come back to that same side. So when we're alternating sides, it kind of, you'll take about a minute break. Um, or rest between, but um, yeah, so that's what you could do if you want. Let's see how we kind of can incorporate that in some poses where it's useful and usable. 
So we're gonna use the, the block. Um, the other thing, if you wanna use that cue of thinking of from the hip crease reaching out to the knee, the leg that lifts to step up on the stair, that's what you're gonna do. Think hip crease up to the shoulder, hip crease out to the knee. And then the back of the leg stuff is what engages to step up on that step. Okay? Okay, so we're gonna step the feet wide. Whatever feels comfortable, like that when you go wide, you're not feeling like an intense stretch on your inner thighs. Um, and that it feels like it's a distance that if I asked you to kind of pull your legs together, you could generate some work through the inner thighs. Okay, so we don't want to be at our end range. And then the whatever hand the block is in, you're going to lift the ball of that foot and spin that heel. So the toes are going to be pointed in the direction of the hand that we have the block. Okay, so now what I want you to do is from that hip crease, out to the knee, I want you to think of trying to kick that leg up to your head. So try to kick that leg up to your head without lifting it off the ground and feel how that action of trying to kick it pulls you over that leg if you just relax. Yeah? Think of trying to kick it up towards your head. And then we can just come down onto the block or we can come onto our leg, hand can stay on our hip or we can reach up in front and over top and we're in triangle pose. Think of that back leg reaching from the sitting bone all the way down into that heel. Still trying to kick yourself in the side of the head so that we're working that front of the thigh hip stuff on this front leg and we're working back of the hip down the back of the leg on that other leg. Okay, keep those actions happening Think about squeezing the legs together to come up. Keep the work. One more time, try to kick yourself in the head. It's funny to say that. <laughs> I felt this last year. I did literally kick myself in the head a few times. <laughs> okay. Keep that work happening. Think about pulling the legs together. Come up. Stuff should be kind of on fire. Keep it working. One more time, try to kick yourself in the head. Pull down. You can reach that arm up and then keep that work happening. Try to scissor the legs together. Relax it. Just stand and kind of notice side to side how that feels. It's not uncommon if you feel like taller or perkier butt on one side or longer through the front of the hip or just warmth because we were working stuff. So you're going to hold the block in your other hand. Step the legs apart, okay? Lift the ball of the foot, spin the toes. Take a look when you spin the toes, like that this comes with you too, right? Because I could just spin like my shin. Yeah, did you see that? It's hard, my knee doesn't want to do it. So I spun my lower leg a lot more than my upper leg. Think of kind of pulling the toes so you firm up this whole leg a little bit and spin the whole leg. And then that idea of you're gonna kick yourself in the head. I feel like um, the Roboto, Aaron, you'll know the song, Mr. Roboto. <laughs> kick yourself in the head. And we pull ourselves over that front leg front of the thigh stuff, nice and active. We're not collapsed over that hip. Because we're trying to kick that leg, there's a lot of co-contraction in the front of that hip. Hand can just come to the thigh, or it could come down onto the block, and then that other arm, we're gonna reach up, and we're in triangle. From that back sit bone, down to the outside of that heel, reach and press. Okay, keep that work happening. Try to kick, reach and press, scissor the legs together. Come up, keep the work happening. Try to kick yourself in the head. Come in, keep the work here happening. Try to scissor the legs together. Great co-contraction, front and back hip. Kick yourself in the side of the head last time. Scissor the 
legs, keep that work happening. Try to pull up, reach down, relax it off. Okay, let's come to standing. Walk around a little bit. That's the other thing is I think we also think like when something feels tight, we're like, oh, I have to relax it. Now we relax it. <laughs> but when I'm moving my body weight around, I, I need to engage it. That engagement sends a ton of information about the joint's position and safety to my brain. And you know what relaxes my brain? Knowing information about my joint's whereabouts. <laughs> okay, so that, that co-contraction actually sends a ton of relaxation stuff to our brains rather than our brain trying to tell our tissues just to relax. They're not relaxing for a reason. Okay, so just notice how that feels walking around. And we're gonna do one more thing for the front of the leg stuff, but this time the ankle. So we did something in Tuesday's class for the ankle. We're gonna do it a little bit differently today. So you're gonna use the wall and you're gonna come onto your forearms into a plank close enough to the wall that your heels can touch, okay? We're gonna try to have our legs as straight as possible, okay? Heels are touching the ground, I'm on my forearms, bottom ribs kind of drawing back, so nice straight line, armpit, center of the rib cage, center of the pelvis, center of the knee, center of the heel. From here what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna think of reaching from my ankle crease out to the top of my foot, engaging that front of the shin stuff. Now I'm gonna push myself away from the wall and bring the soles of my feet with me. Okay, so from the front of the ankle crease, I'm reaching out long through my toes, lifting the top of the foot away from the floor. Active ankle dorsiflexion. Now, I'm gonna challenge that range by starting to shift my pelvis over my feet, but I'm not gonna let the soles of my feet touch. Eee. Keep working, keep reaching out from that ankle crease out to the toes, pull the top of the foot towards the bottom of the shin, and then relax the feet onto the floor. Okay, we're gonna just kind of march on the spot. You could take your toes back and do some circles because remember, we want to give that tissue a chance to rest and just kind of reset before we do that again. I might lift the leg up, just kind of shake it all about. And the other side. Okay, so I'm going to find myself in that plank. Heels are down. I feel my passive range here. So what's my passive dorsiflexion range? Okay, now I'm gonna think about reaching from the ankle crease, press into the elbows a little bit, out through the toes, and then I'm gonna lift up onto my hands and the soles of the feet are gonna come with me. Out from the front of the ankle, reaching out long through the toes. Okay, active ankle dorsiflexion here. I could walk, keeping the sole, <laughs> reaching out from that ankle, out through the toes. Okay, then I'm gonna settle in here and start to shift my hips towards my toes and try to keep the sole of my foot off the floor for as long as possible. Reach out through the toes, out through the toes, out through the toes, out through the toes, through the toes and relax. Okay, come off that wall, just walk a little bit. Okay, and see how that feels. Okay, to finish, I want us to come into triangle one more time on each side and use the whole front of the leg stuff because now we've figured out ankle and hip. Um, actually, no, we're not going to do triangle. We're going we're gonna to do um, 
down dog. So hands are going to come to the floor. I'm going to hands and knees. So to come up, I want you to think about reaching from your hip crease out to your knee and hip crease out to your shoulders. Okay, think about reaching from your ankle crease out the tips of your toes. Keep reaching from your hip crease out to your knees and your hip crease up to your shoulders. Ankle crease out to your toes. Use the front of the leg stuff to try to try to push you forward into your hands a little bit. And then use your arms. Keep that front of the leg tension and try to push back towards your hips. Woo, dolly, okay? Work, work, work. Bend those knees, lower down. Sit on back. Okay, so you wouldn't wanna do that for every down dog, but you can start to feel how you can use those co-contractions to, again, modulate the load for yourself, where you want to have a sense of stretch and where you want to have a sense of engagement and how you feel afterwards. So just kneeling or you can come up to tall kneeling. Let's just inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, hinge those hips back, sweep the arms back. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, down in front, sweep the arms back. Just bow the head. Let's just take two breaths here, inhaling through the nose, out, exhaling through the mouth. Shift your weight back onto your heels. Bring your palms together. Just kind of breathe in and consider one discovery that you had today about, about your body about what works for you that you want to remember. And maybe you even want to make a commitment to yourself to revisit it tomorrow. That one thing. Thanks for practicing with me this afternoon and today.